Barbara, as we discussed, do you have anything to share from us from a patient perspective on some of the key points that you that made an impact on you from what we do every day on the floor caring for our patients and things that you would encourage us to continue to do well from your perspective? Well, <laughs> um, it was interesting since I was one of your first patients here when the hospital opened. Um, it was a very interesting ride. Um, I, I could say as far as the, the courtesy and the care there, uh, I don't drink coffee, but if I did, boy, they would have put sugar and milk in there for me, you know, that's for sure. So I was getting that kind of treatment, uh, although the hospital was beautiful and it still is today. Uh, I guess the scrambling of a little disorientation there because they had a lot of people coming in from other hospitals, training, you know, uh, others. Uh, they weren't expecting someone to come in with the severe illness that I was coming in with. So that kind of threw us all off here and we were, that was the many reasons why I was sent to St. David's rehab and coming back and they didn't know what to do at that point. So uh, I would say maybe in the future any new hospitals being built, you know, I'm sure there's going to be many more to just be prepared who comes in. You talked a little bit about how you saw God's hands mm -hmm. working through the healthcare team. How exactly did you experience it? What was it at the time that made you think that? Uh, I, uh, from time to time, I would get some of the nurses uh, talking to me. Uh, once I got my hearing back on, uh, they would say, we're praying for you. Uh, we're with you. We haven't left your side. You know, giving me that security that someone's taking care of me. Uh, telling me that, you know, all, all the time being in touch with me to say, uh, your husband just stepped out, he's going to be right back in, you know, to make me feel that I wasn't alone. And uh, constantly, are you in pain? Are you uncomfortable? Are you, you know, uh, just showing that care meant a lot to me. It, it gave me the security. It made me feel that these were people with compassion and just not this is another job I need to come to, you know, and she's sick like everybody else. Not that kind of attitude at all. Not from Williamson, not from Maine. No, no, not at all. Good. It's, it's a rare treat to have someone give us feedback on their own terribly difficult journey. We just, I'm, at least I, that I'm aware of, we don't hear this that often. And you have really lifted the hearts of the people, I think, in this room. And we will make sure the message moves further throughout the hospital. But uh, it's a confirmation that you just, the world is not confirming most of the time. But this is a confirmation that just tops everything. Thank you very much. Were, were you diagnosed with Guillain Bray when you were admitted? No. I was not, and that was the, the difficulty in the new hospital here. Then by doing the spinal tap, which the spinal tap fluid determines that, uh, I went in for a couple of them, which was a, another big ordeal when I returned back to the room because you get extensive headaches, I think, of the movement or something, so that was very horrible. But anyway, then, then he finally concluded that that's what it would be. But... Um, my, my uh, length of doctors, I have to say, have all been compassionate. Yes, I did have one or two that, you know, just didn't agree with us in a lot of things. But I would say the majority of the doctors were open to suggestions, open to ideas. Uh, sat, gave us all their time, not rushed, you know, and we appreciated that. So the other two remaining doctors that, you know, just didn't quite comprehend this were just wanting to send me off, get therapy, and there's nothing else we can do. Uh, that's going to be the rest of your life, not walking. And we just didn't want to agree with that. We, we just, my husband just wouldn't let me go, you know, and said, no, you don't know my wife, <laughs> you know, how strong she is. And, and when I 
when I uh, first got GBS, I was at home. when I didn't have the flu shot, which is known to be off of a flu shot. Uh, shot. I had never gotten the flu shot in my life, never been sick. I was in the great, great bit of health, exercising. Uh, I worked, you know, just normally. But I got up one morning to take a shower. When I got out, my whole left leg went paralyzed and I collapsed to the floor. And that's how it hit me. When I was in a coma, I just want to clarify this. We are very much alive. We're not dead. We are very much alive. Even though we can't hear, even though we can't speak or see, our spirit, there is actually a spirit within you that just goes around checking everything for you and signals it to you. And that's what my book will explain. I had over 30 dreams during my coma. And I saw heaven and I saw hell. And it's, it's going to be very interesting. You know, I hope that you all will get it someday. I hope to finish publishing it. This year, it's, it's called A Different Life. Is the, um, the message of your book more a message to healthcare providers, or is it to people who, uh, is it a spiritual message, or is it? it? I would think it's more leaning spiritually because of my journey through it, how the type of person I was before, the reasoning behind this is my spiritual part of it, and now, what am I to do now? Uh, although I have thanked many of, you know, providers, you know, healthcare people, uh, you know, staff, doctors, you know, I, I've thanked so many of them and what they did and how they helped me. Uh, there's nothing totally against them because I didn't have anybody who mistreated me. Everyone just took care of me. And I do want to say, when you're in bed that long, you do get bed sores or whatever. I don't have a single sore in me when I left that hospital because of the care I was taking care of. They lubricated me with lotions, bathed me, bathed me, bathed me. I mean, I, I probably was the cleanest person in the whole hospital when I left. <laughs> and I loved it, you know, looking at my back and my body, I was like, I don't have a cut, I don't have a bruise or an infection. So that's how well I was loved and taken care of. <laughs> On behalf of all the leadership, most of whom are in this room and others that are not, that are working on the floors and so on, we would like to thank you for coming in and witnessing your faith and sharing your story or your journey. You might find it interesting to know that long before this hospital actually opened that we spent a tremendous amount of time in a very systematic design process to create a very positive, memorable patient and family experience. And of course, we were doing it outside the um, benefit of ongoing operations, so some of our thinking was a little bit experimental or theoretical and has been tested since that time, and we ourselves feel like we're on a journey. And the journey is to constantly improve and to look through the eyes of the patient as if we were standing in your shoes and to do things for you that would create positive memories and help you in your healing process. One of the things that's benefited us early on is that we didn't bring in any inexperienced nurses. Everyone had experience here, and it sounds like that was a good investment because that may have also contributed positively to your experience. But I'm sure we also were struggling with challenges as we brought up a new hospital and our medical staff uh, was new and has evolved since that time. But as we listen to your story, we're all trying to connect to what worked and what didn't and what can we do to improve. And that's really the, where a lot of these questions are coming from. And of course, we're very focused, especially given our traditions and being sponsored by uh, the Daughters of Charity, to be very thoughtful about mind, body, and spirit and the whole notion of healing, even though sometimes we can't always provide our patients with a cure. But it's that spiritual part that also, I think, contributes to what we're trying to do. And you're coming in, although we do get information from surveys and so on, we hardly have an opportunity to actually to speak with someone that's reflecting back over a long journey that you've been on. So we wish you the very best and that God will be with you and you'll be in our prayers. And if you or your family ever need uh, care, I hope you'll think about us because we would love to uh, take care of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just have one last thing. I have a special guest with me. It's one of my many therapists. It's Brittany, who is my pool therapist and works with me.
mentioned they work with the YWCA uh, there uh, for the pool, uh, and they have a therapy pool there. So I work with her every Friday, and she's the one really getting me moving here. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.